Hey gang, old Big Collector here, and uh, this is the pocket computer that a lot of you know about. Some of you have one of these, which is basically a uh, VGA Plus 256 board uh, stacked on top of a uh, Parallax Quick Start board. And I've got it booted up here with the standard pocket computer basic. One of the um, challenges of this project is that the propeller has 32K of memory uh, to work with entirely. And even with the addition of an SRAM chip uh, extended memory on the VGA Plus board, uh, it's still uh, a really tight challenge to load all of this functionality into the propeller, which on the pocket computer eats up somewhere in the neighborhood of about 27K, uh, leaving about 4K and a few more bytes left over for actual uh, writing your basic code. And so, uh, with this in mind, I started looking at ways that we might be able to uh, upgrade the Pocket Computer Project and perhaps expand it outward. Now, one of our, um, uh, another counterpart project that uses, uh, that is a microcomputer system that uses propellers called the Hive Project. And what they did with theirs to expand it is they basically built a, a board that uses three propellers. Um, one controls uh, the central processing, uh, one controls the, uh, the audio, they can push the video onto a prop. Uh, and so instead of having 32K, they've got 96K combined, uh, plus uh, the combination of COGS. So I started looking at the idea of, you know, what can we do with the, the pocket computer project? What can we do to kind of go in the same direction? And sometimes the answers are, uh, are smack dab right in front of your face all along. The quick start has and I've removed the the standard header from this one um, by the way these things are really easy to remove you can just kind of take a pair of pliers and shift left and right carefully and it's a it's a surface mount female connector but I've removed it from this one I was hoping that in doing so you'd be able to see the addition a little easier um, but this is a uh, a male pin header that's been put into the into the secondary uh, socket that's available on the quick start. I haven't, I've never seen anyone actually take advantage of this at least, or at least say so on the forums. So I've, what I've done is I've dropped a mail pin header in here. I've skipped a few uh, pins intentionally, things like uh, reset. Um, I intentionally skipped uh, 30 and 31, which are the transmit and receive uh, to keep them so that these could be programmed independent of each other. Uh, I didn't want a reset to happen on the top that would reset both propellers simultaneously. So uh, let me bring this up a little closer to the camera. So as you look at this, you'll see I've skipped a number of pins, but then what I've done is I've also tied a bunch of the I.O. pins together. Uh, in particular, the important parts of this project are uh, tying all the pins for VGA, which is 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, I believe, um, tying the audio pins together, which are 10, or 10 and 11, and then most importantly, uh, in, in my code, at least right now, 12 and 13, I'm using as the uh, transmit and receive pins between the two propellers. Uh, so mail pin header on this quick start, just you know another quick start loaded up here. And then I'm going to pull this uh, cog sled out of the way here. And you can see that the, the bottom, what I've done here is I've just uh, put a, a, the reverse, a female pin header into that extra set of holes in the, in the top one so that I can plug these two together. And uh, let's do that here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my bottom one here and plug it into the carefully here. Top, probably shouldn't do this with the power on, but I'm doing it anyway. For powers are... Uh, are pretty resilient in this way. So now we got the, the double stack, and I, I put a photo of this up on the forums um, a while ago about, about the double stack and, uh, and how it works. So now what I want to do is I'm going to uh, basically separate the video and audio components of the basic down into the bottom propeller um, while leaving the top one to take keyboard input, handle um, SD, handle SRAM. So in a sense, what I've done is I've moved about 12K of programs which were running on the, on the single core version of this down to the bottom propeller. Well, that opens up a ton of space for more basic code, more basic functionality, more commands, more space to program in. 
Um, and then, of course, with the video audio drivers moved to the bottom propeller, I've still got somewhere in the neighborhood of 15K right now. I have no idea what to do with. So um, <laughs> we're talking about kilobytes here. And, and I feel like it, that I've got like I've opened up a new basement in the house or something. So uh, everything you can think small when you're doing this. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and uh, see if we can get this to fire up here. I'm going to reset the top propeller and uh, hopefully the uh, there it goes. Now what I've got here is this is something I'm calling VASP um, which is uh, which is the, the two propeller version of basic. You can see up here on the screen I've already opened 8k of basic room is free up here at the top. Um, so what's happening here is I've uh, I'm receiving data for the VGA header uh, through through this board through to the from the bottom propeller I'm receiving audio information from the bottom propeller and it's being put up here um, I've got a little bit of noise on here I'm still working on some issues here on the driver just kind of taking care of some of this um, but then 12 and 13 are communicating right now and what's kind of cool is that the, I've got the flashing cursor here on the screen I probably shouldn't do this but it, I'm gonna I think I'm gonna leave it like this what's happening is is that the cursor flash code or the code sent to redefine the cursor to be nothing and then be a full block is actually being transmitted every second. Um, so the fact that I have a flashing cursor right now sort of tells me everything is working and there's definitely communication going on here. So on this particular version of the, uh, of the double pocket computer basic here, or the VASP basic, this is the same text driver that we used in the original pocket computer project. It's the same VGA text and, and basic graphics drivers with the plot command and you can do lines and boxes just as before and, and it's just as fast in this mode. The, um, the SID cog, we had tiny SID in the original version of PMC. We've expanded to the entire SID cog. Now obviously we had tons of room for it and it is also available uh, in the bottom propeller again sending its information up here to the audio connector. Um, but ultimately, one of the things I want the pocket computer to be able to do is I want to be able to play video games. I want to be able to write interesting and, and more complex video games in BASIC and uh, have enough memory space and enough horsepower to do that. Now, in, in older computers, I'm retro computing here, um, some of the older computers like Apple, uh, Coco, they had a mode command. And what you could do is you could change the graphics mode by typing its mode command and you would go from a text mode to a graphics mode and that's exactly what we're shooting for here the uh, the text mode will be the default when you boot up of course you get the pretty blue screen and the you know 40 column 42 column base basic with uh, some more memory but then by typing the word mode in your program or in the basic what we're going to do is we're going to execute a secondary graphics object onto the second propeller without restarting the top propeller. Uh, so your program is still there. It's just going to change the graphics driver in the bottom propeller and change the graphics quote mode that you're in so that you can do uh, some basic tiles, uh, perhaps some sprites. Uh, we want to get some movement commands in here to kind of speed things up a little bit because basic can only really go so fast right now so that it's actually useful. And so the quick start, it again, lends itself to the project. It's got a 64K EEPROM, which means that we can stick the uh, standard text driver in the bottom uh, where it'll just start when it gets power. And then when we want to launch the secondary graphics driver, we'll uh, issue a launch from the EEPROM, from the upper section of the EEPROM to launch the second binary uh, so that you're in the graphics mode. Now, I haven't gotten this far yet. Um, I believe the wheel has already been created here and I just need to find the code to make that work. But what I'm working on right now is I'm working on that second graphics driver. Uh, and so let me start it up here from my connected PC is the way I'm doing it right now. And of course it's important that I check to make sure. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to reprogram the top propeller when I do this. I want to program the bottom propeller. Interestingly enough here I can switch the USB cable over to the bottom and the unit should power up just as before so I'm passing the, the 5 volt, the 3 volt, the ground pins through uh, through one prop and another. Now you'll notice that this time um, it, it came up blank and it has that tendency to do that when you're powering from the bottom one. It's generally best to do it from the top and I may not be feeding quite enough so 
Let's load the secondary graphics mode onto the bottom propeller and see if it'll actually work when the camera is running. There we go. My lights are up. And I've got a flashing ready prompt here. So, yeah, this is a lower resolution graphics driver. Um, we've got um, right off the bat in uh, single bit mode. I can do single bit redefinitions of the characters, and I've got eight colors available. Um, this is a uh, this is an eight color graphics driver, but it's also got a multi color mode uh, or multi tile mode, which uh, we've already got some characters that are set up to display that. Let me write a quick program here that will do just that. So here we go. Four x equals fourteen to thirty one. Display uh, X. Let's see, let's just put X up on the screen just for the fun of it. And do a next here. And now I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen. Again, all of these um, screen commands are being sent from the top propeller. As I type the basic code, I'm sending this video mode to this to the bottom propeller, uh, including the, the flashing cursor, the heartbeat that's telling me everything is working. Uh, so it's a wonderful thing about the propeller. Once you get some code that, that works correctly one time, it, uh, it's pretty stable from here on out. I just I keep kind of pinching myself to remind myself that this is not a Windows platform. Uh, you don't have uh, random instabilities on the prop. What a wonderful thing. So I'm going to run this program. And right off the bat, you see the multicolor tiles. Um, we're working right now. I'm working on the redefine, the expanded redefine commands that will let you uh, redefine a multicolor tile uh, from basic. Uh, spent a lot of time over the weekend to uh, to get it up to this level of functionality. I'm pretty happy with stability at this point. I'm also pretty happy with speed and how things are functioning now. It's just a matter of you know getting dumping more commands in here, getting more uh, capability added, so we can send things like backgrounds maybe. Uh, definitely I want to send sprites, uh, which in this driver, sprites are just simply uh, four tiles stuck next to each other. Should be, it should be a simple trick to get to uh, take any four tiles and create a sprite from the four tiles. Uh, and then we can institute some sprite movement commands and what have you. So uh, uh, lots of good stuff going on here. You know, I've got here I've got 8K, which is twice what you get uh, on, the, on the standard pocket computer when you boot it up. Um, I'm, I'm already so close to having a dual mode graphics driver running on this. It isn't funny. Um, big thanks to uh, Carl. Shouts out to Carl Roadster on the forums. Uh, Carl, thanks a lot. Uh, he spotted something over the weekend. I had an errant one errant command in the code that was causing it to run at about 10% normal speed, and uh, he really quick kind of found it and said, "You know, what is this? Get this out of here." Uh, which got this project, uh, got the second propeller up to 100% right away. So there's uh, code. If you want to experiment with this, there's code up on the propeller powered forums. Um, for those of you who have a PMC already and would like a second quick start to do this, um, there is a special offer for PMC owners uh, to obtain a, a second quick start very inexpensively. You'll have to contact me through the forums. Uh, but come check it out. Come download the code. Give this a shot for yourself. Now you don't have to have the uh, VGA Plus 256 board uh, and it, to do this, or even two quick starts to do this. All of the schematics are freely available on Propeller Powered. Take any two of your favorite propellers, uh, stick a standard PS2 keyboard interface on there and a VGA interface on there. Uh, make sure the second propeller's got a 64K EEPROM. You're going to want that soon. Uh, and you're rocking and rolling. You can participate in the project, so I'd invite you to do so. So uh, come over, give us a visit to uh, www.propellerpower.com, the forums, forums.propellerpower.com. Uh, also, before I end the video, coming up, Ohio, uh, Orville area, August 17th. If you're in Northeast Ohio and you want to see prop projects in the, in the flesh, so to speak, uh, make sure you plan to come over to the Propeller Powered Expo. Uh, it's the new name for the unofficial Propeller Powered Expo Northeast. We've just absorbed it into Propeller Powered. Same game. It's all about your projects. Uh, check out the site. You'll find more information up on the forums as well. Thanks for listening.